How's it going, guys? Good afternoon. Had a tough loss, but a uh, hard-fought effort. and Got another challenge coming up this week. It's going to be equal to uh, the la one from last week. So we're right in the middle of the Big Ten. Here we go. Questions I can answer for you? Everyone talks about Michigan's defense, but their offense seems to be much better than it has been in recent years. Do you attribute all of that to Shea Patterson or, or part of it? I mean, how have they kind of progressed? Well, they're very similar to what they were a year ago offensively. That added dimension they have is now a little bit more mobile quarterback. When you actually look at all the runs that uh, as you would consider to be quarterback runs, zone reads, those kinds of things, uh, more often than not, he's handing the ball off, but he runs it just enough that you got to respect it. Uh, particularly in certain field zones and things like that. So uh, the run game is the same in terms of all the downhill running, all the power running, and the things that they've done in the past. Again, the added dimension is a, a little bit more of a quarterback threat than what there used to be. I think they're fourth in the country in time of possession. Uh, is that third downs? Is that the ability to run? I mean, what do you think has been the key for them to kind of stay on the field so much? Well, yeah, obviously they're moving the chains and, and um, you know, they're doing a good job throwing the football too. I know there's a lot of emphasis put on and, and discussed uh, with regard to their running game, but, um, you know, they're, they're throwing the football pretty well too for a team that styles itself as being a, a downhill running, kind of a running uh, emphasis uh, offensively speaking. They, they throw the ball pretty well. So um, anytime you have lots of weapons, and you have the ability to run it or throw it, you're going to find yourself in manageable third downs. And, you know, as a key, as we all know, defensively speaking, is for those third downs to be long yardage third downs, offensively for them to be short yardage third downs. So, you know, uh, whoever's got the upper hand in that area is going to have the best chance to succeed. Against a team like Michigan with their defense, you know, being so good, do you prepare more guys maybe if you're on the field longer to maybe make more substitutions during the game? Is, is it a little different in the preparation from that aspect? Well, we, we will if we can. Again, uh, we've discussed over the course of weeks here uh, some of the challenges that we have from a depth standpoint. Um, you know, I, I don't know what kind of a game it's going to be in terms of snap count, things of that nature. That's something we've just got to be ready to adjust as the game goes along. But you know, certainly we're going to play as many guys as we can and roll them through. And I think you saw last week at Wisconsin, even up front in the D-line, some of the younger guys that hadn't gotten as many snaps before uh, went into the game and got more of them. And uh, that's just what we're going to have to do in order to have a chance to, uh, to be able to be somewhat fresh in the fourth quarter. The last time that Michigan was here, the way they won the game with all the points, you know, in general, do you, do you think it's out of line when a team keeps scoring and keeps scoring and keeps going for the end zone when it's clear that the outcome is decided? <laughs> Well, I, I would say I got enough of my own problems without worrying about somebody else's. So, uh, you know, our job is to stop them. They're going to do what they do. Uh, they're going to choose to do whatever they feel is in the best interest of their program. I think sometimes when you look at it offensively speaking in that situation, if you do have backups in the game, you're trying to get guys an opportunity to throw and catch. It might not have a chance to do it. You could look at it as running the score up, things of that nature. But, you know, our job is to stop them. Like I said, their, their job is to do what they feel like they need to do to develop their program and continue on. So um, we just got to leave it at that. Re regarding Saquon Hampton, uh, I think Chris said, like, maybe in his first year that he, uh, he thought that Saquon had a chance to play in the NFL someday, which was a bold statement at the time. Seems like he's playing at a high level now. Can you assess where he is now, you know, in his progress and, you know, you see the NFL as possibly a future for, for Saquon? Well, I think he's got great tools and a great skill set, and he probably came off of one of his best performances Saturday at Wisconsin. Uh, not only the two interceptions, uh, which were great plays, particularly the one along our sideline that he caught and got his feet down before stumbling out of bounds. I think that's a very, very athletic play. But he also showed up in the run game and did some really good things in terms of uh, making tackles. And I'm talking like down near the line of scrimmage tackles, not uh, you know secondary related tackles. A lot of times people think about eight, 10 yards down the field, shoestring them down and get a chance to line up again. But he was down there on the line of scrimmage, you know, laying the wood to people pretty good. So. Um, I felt like he played probably his most complete game uh, and also one that, that, that produced a lot of big plays for him, which, which obviously contributed to us being in the situation we are. We're going in the locker room at halftime. But uh, to get back to your original point, yes, I, you know, I mean, I'd like to think he does have uh, the skill sets and the qualities that uh, the guys at the next level are going to be looking at. Of course, 
as we all know, it's up to them to decide that, not us. But um, you know, certainly when I look at the guys that we've coached over the years, whether it be here or other places, and uh, you compare him to some of those guys, uh, he certainly is a, is, a, is a guy that I think it, they would be wanting to take a look at. Is the defense we've seen the past two games maybe what you thought the unit would look like, I, I guess, coming into the season? Do you think that you guys have finally arrived to that point? Um, I, I, that's, a, that's a difficult question to answer. It's a yes and a no answer, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we feel like we, we accomplished some good things, certainly in the Northwestern game, and then again at Wisconsin. But uh, some of the things that happened in the second half of the Wisconsin game reared their ugly head, you know, much like they had prior to the Northwestern game with us giving, giving up a couple of longer runs that popped and, and some of those things. So it comes back to us being consistent. Uh, we've seen flashes of what we think we, you know, had hoped we would be. And now we've got to see over the course of these next three games if we can iron that out and, and become more consistent um, and make sure that, uh, again, it goes back to the, the explosive play issue. Uh, Northwestern, we had, I think, two and 80 some snaps. Uh, then we turned around, and even though we had a little bit better uh, performance against Wisconsin, um, you know, we still gave up some big plays there that we wished we hadn't. And uh, had we not, I think we would have found ourselves with a chance to win the game in the fourth quarter. Okay, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.